Listen, I know you guys all love democracy as much as I do, so it's time now more than ever to stay alert and understand what Donald Trump is building towards when he uses this inflammatory rhetoric surrounding January 6th, surrounding the so-called hostages, which they're insurrectionists, not hostages, and especially when he says he'll pardon them. He's building towards a massive loyalty test if he wins a second term, and I'll explain it all, but first, watch Jen Psaki single-handedly eviscerate the entire Trump campaign. Take a look. Context, everyone. Otherwise, it's irresponsible. Well, if they want us to consider the full context, let's do just that. Because the full context is that Trump kicked off the same exact rally by saluting the people who were convicted for the deadly assault on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th, all to the tune of the national anthem sung by a choir of imprisoned insurrectionists. The full context is that some of the first words out of Trump's mouth last night, same rally, were thanking those rioters and calling them patriots. The full context is that he also said in this same rally, quote, if this election isn't won, I'm not sure that you'll ever have another election in this country. The full context is that he went on to say some undocumented immigrants are, quote, not people. And of course, the full context is that this is much bigger than one single speech. This embrace of political violence, this dehumanizing language. This is what Donald Trump has been preaching for years. In January, he warned that there will be, quote, bedlam in this country if his criminal prosecution derailed his campaign. Late last year, he echoed the dehumanizing language of Adolf Hitler, comparing his political opponents to vermin and saying immigrants are, quote, poisoning the blood of our country. Last month, he said there would be potential death and destruction if he was charged in the Manhattan criminal probe. And during his first term, he flat out refused to condemn the political violence at a white nationalist rally in Charlottesville, Virginia saying there were very fine people on both sides. In 2020, he reportedly asked his defense secretary about shooting people who were protesting the death of George Floyd, saying, can't you just shoot them? Just shoot them in the legs or something. And of course, his very words inspired violence on January 6, 2021, when he told a crowd of his supporters to walk down to the Capitol and fight like hell, because, quote, you'll never take back our country with weakness. Trust me. I could go on and on and on. We all know by now that Trump's allusions to political violence are not merely rhetorical. His supporters take them literally. That's part of the big problem here. And he knows that too. So no, we did not miss the full context. This was not some meandering off message comment. This is his message. Jen Psaki is so good at what she does, but what she was talking about is very important, and I actually want to expand on it. Something I wish the mainstream media would talk about more is Project 2025, which I hope you guys are all aware of. It's Donald Trump's plan to fire a bunch of civil servants and to replace them with over 50,000 people that are loyal to him. There are other facets of the plan that I could get into, but that's the one I want to focus on right now. So I want you to imagine a reality, a terrifying reality, where Donald Trump somehow wins a second term. Hopefully that won't happen, but imagine he's a year into his second term. He has 50,000 civil servants in the government that all are working at his will. They're indebted to him for their jobs. At this point, we know that Donald Trump will be eroding every single norm in the book and tearing down all of the three-letter institutions that he's been rallying against. But what happens when a court order comes through that he disagrees with? Maybe something from the Supreme Court about a border wall, and he says, I'm just not going to follow that. Now, the 50,000 civil servants under him will be a little bit terrified. We work in the government and we're going against the Supreme Court. But if Donald Trump promises to pardon them, he promises to pardon anybody underneath him who breaks the law for him just like he did with the January Sixers. Every time he says he's going to pardon these so-called hostages, that is exactly what I think of. He is laying the groundwork for a loyalty test where if he gets a second term, anybody who breaks the law or erodes a norm for him will get pardoned. It's just another piece of a larger plot to consolidate power within the U.S. government and essentially put an end to our liberal democracy. This sounds like I'm fear-mongering, but I'm not. We've seen him do this before. Take a look at this next clip. We begin tonight with the race for the White House and former President Trump's campaign now on the defensive after his fiery rhetoric at a rally in Dayton, Ohio on Saturday night. Trump warning while discussing the economy that there would be a, quote, bloodbath if he is not reelected in November. This after the former president kicked off the event by paying tribute to those who attacked the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. President Biden's campaign swiftly denouncing those comments as threats of political violence. We've seen Donald Trump use this 
apocalyptic rhetoric every chance he gets. He catastrophizes even the smallest events in order to energize his base. So when we take his rhetoric paired with the actions of his supporters on January 6th and the months surrounding that, paired with his actions while in office and after he left office, it's very easy to realize that he is trying to skirt every norm in the book. He's trying to erode these norms that we've set in place and he's trying to undermine our institutions and he's done a good job. When I talk to his supporters on the field, they don't trust any institution. Take a look at this clip of me talking to Alex Stone, who is Roger Stone's nephew. I did this as a part of a Gen Z versus Gen Z debate, and this is the moment I realized that these people don't have any faith in our institutions. Watch. Do you trust Mike Pence at all when he says the election wasn't stolen? Um, I don't trust Mike Pence, uh, period. Let me ask you, do you trust Bill Barr at all when he says the election wasn't stolen? No. Do you trust Mark Meadows at all when he says the election wasn't stolen? No. You don't trust the 60 courts that Trump brought evidence to? No. So it makes me worry when every single court, every single institution, every single person in America that's not Donald Trump or Mike Lindell are lying to you. And I, I'm going to go back to my point. When you weigh the credibility of these people, do I believe every single institution, which sure, they're flawed, or do I trust Mike Lindell? Probably the institutions that are upholding our democracy, right? Uh, I, I would say that the institutions that are upholding our democracy aren't upholding our democracy. Expand on that. Uh, what we see is a rise of communism all over the United States. And so uh, if you go and look at what the Frankfurt School mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in Frankfurt mm -hmm. uh, had, they have 11 main points that they want to be involved in every single facet of society. What's the definition of communism in your eyes? I don't have the definition of communism all over. I have the points, you know, what these things look like. Mm -hmm. I don't have the definition of it. Also. This kid is a prime example of how Donald Trump has successfully eroded trust in all of our institutions. And if he wins a second term, he will not hesitate to tear these institutions down. And all of his followers will be right behind him, cheering him on. I just want to point out, because it's important to me, that people like Vladimir Putin are actively boosting Donald Trump's lies because they want to create this atmosphere of distrust in America. Putin knows that dividing a country and making the citizens of a country hate their own government is far too cheaper than any sort of ground invasion he could ever launch. The new weapons of mass destruction are in the realm of informational warfare, and a lot of Americans haven't caught up yet. A lot of Americans are actively falling for Russian bots, and it scares I'm going to play one final clip of Trump to really bring the point home, but just imagine being in Mike Pence's shoes and watching Donald Trump praise the people who wanted to hang Mike Pence on January 6th. And in Mike Pence's book, he says that Trump didn't even call him to see if he was okay. I don't even know if they've talked since then, but play this last clip. It. If I run and if I win, we will treat those people from January 6th fairly. We will treat them fairly. And if it requires pardons, we will give them pardons because they are being treated so unfairly. This hasn't happened to all of the other atrocities that took place recently. Nothing like this has happened. What that unselect committee is doing and what the people are doing that are running those prisons, it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. We will treat them fairly and we will take care of the people of this country, all of the people of this country. My name is Adam Mockler with Midas Touch. You're watching the Gen Z Blueprint. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and have a great day.